And it's not just writing in reference to FCAT writing, it's also writing across the board. It's writing for communication purposes and writing for even higher education. And if you look at our numbers and you look at our scores, our students are not where they need to be. All right, for essay focus, if you look at the top, it's the actual focus of the essay. Um, how are students writing? How are they organizing their information? Looking at the numbers, 65% of our students are at a focus level. If you really analyze the data, it shows that they're between a level three and a level four, which means that their guide, whatever it is that they're using, their prompt, um, their direction in writing is not up to where our students need to be. For level of organization, our students are stuck at a level four which means that whatever, whatever method they're using to organize their paper is not allowing them to reach the, the uh, level six. So again, we need to take a look at what we're doing and how we're teaching writing to our students in reference to make sure that these numbers increase. Okay, for support. In reference to support, again, they're stuck at a level three. 181 of our students are unable to support the information that they're writing. And then finally, their conventions. Conventions, again, they're stuck. However, it shows a level of improvement in the past years. Because they're not at a level three, they're actually at a level four. Which means they understand the rules for capitalization, they understand the rules for punctuation. However, somewhere in between those rules, they're not understanding comma rules or conjunction rules. So, in reference to the information um, that was, that's presented, what can we do for the, our biggest area of focus what can we come up with together to teach our kids to write and support their information? What are some strategies that you're using in class? And again, I just pulled them from the reports. And I took three different reports. I took the My Access, the Right Score, and both facts, um, persuasive and expository. What are you using to help our students? I tell them to pee, point, example, explain. And they think it's funny, so they remember. It does sound funny, but hey, it works, it works. <laughs> Go ahead, what so is it? To state a point, then you need to have examples to prove your point and then to explain it. And then I have them when we're discussing whatever the OBR is because they have to do that. I tell them to, I'm having them now read because first I was getting them used to pointing out the, the details of whatever it is that we were talking about. Um, so now I'm having them read only what they write and if they're embarrassed to read what they wrote because it doesn't make sense, then they know already that it's not of like making sense the way they're organizing. Is there anyone that uses anything different? I, okay. Just something that we're, we're, we started doing, which is a definition essay, which teaches them to focus on something and to maintain that focus, which I think will go over into the expository mm -hmm. and the persuasive essays. And it's fun. So if we can get them to have fun when they're writing, then maybe they won't be so blocked when they have to write something serious. Okay. You can do question papers. You have them write, you come up with the simplest, even if it's one word, right, something that's exciting to them, and you say, oh, World of Warcraft, you love it. All right, so they start with, what is World of Warcraft? And they have to write an entire two-page paper using nothing but questions. And that question paper helps them think through the process and requires them to come up with enough information and, it's, and at the same time it requires them to build focus because they can't focus if you're asking questions that aren't relevant to the questions before it. Does that make sense? Okay, and I'm going to piggyback based on what you were saying. I went ahead and I looked at three different job applications for one student. He's applying at three different places. And they're asked, one of those specific applications asked him to write a summary and just to explain who he is. And he was unable to stick to the front. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it, so maybe that method will work for him. At an 11th, at a 12th grade level, he wasn't, he wasn't able to just stick to whatever the question was asking him to do. Anyone else have any suggestions? We're doing mini lessons on grammar too, um, as warm ups, yeah. um, on maybe a punctuation or you know things that would help and focus on this. One thing that I'm, I'm doing when I'm checking their essays, this texting lingo, I highlight it, all of it. If it's 35 times, I'm highlighting it so they can see this is how you're writing and this is not acceptable. So making them aware of the mistakes. I do, to piggyback on that, when they do journals, we're reading so we don't do a whole lot of heavy essay work. 
but I circle everything and then I tell them, look, go back, everything that they made a mistake on they have to write out ten times and it forces them to spend more time because they don't want to sit there and write it out ten times. Okay. Oh, uh, I have, for support, I always do anecdotes, quotes, and statistics. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when they're doing their um, planning, I, I make them write them on note cards. So they have to actually have an anecdote on a note card. They have to have statistics, they have to have, you know, concrete details. And then they, they, I use them and they, they organize them. I um, just give them a, a simple quote. We'll discuss the quote. And usually it's, it's very complex because of SATs, it's philosophical or um, so, um, psychology, sociology, and we'll discuss the structure, the meaning, the tone, the author's purpose, and then I'll tell them, okay, let's go ahead and develop a thesis. You know, what are three things that you can say, not just give me your opinion, but three, thing, three things that you can go back to this quote to support. And if you notice in reference to the conventions, it's a big problem, mm -hmm. because we're stuck on a three, we can't move beyond the three. And that, for our any results for Florida rights, and that's what we need. We're not going to have any sixes. Yes? Um, I did, um, well, actually, the spring board, and this happened what, about a couple of weeks ago. We were using um, textual support to prove uh, characterization. So we were using part of the, the spring board strategy was to have the readers and students go back into the narrative that was actually personal narrative describing a couple of characters. So they had to use a chart, a graphic organizer, in order to okay, give the name of the protagonist, antagonist, and then go ahead and, based on the quotes and textual support, find out what type of quality characterization that character has. There's two grade levels that are really important that feed into the writing process. It's seventh grade and eighth grade. Those are the two crucial years. Now looking at what the additional scores. Our average students, Average students are at a level four, based on, I'm sorry, level three, based on the information from the right score and based on the information from my access. Now, when comparing it to bad scores, it's a little different because our average students are at a level four, which is not bad. It actually brings it up. And these are the bad scores that were previously submitted. For the expository and then for the persuasive, we were at a level five in reference to persuasive. I was surprised. Which means we're on the right track, it's mm -hmm. just there's certain areas that need to be tweaked. Mm -hmm. And they were expressing it. Miss, this one was easier than the expository. At least my kids were. And, and when I started documenting the results, I'm like, oh, they actually did much better. Um, and when you have them side by side, you can see the difference too. Uh, bat one and bat two. So I said, okay, something is working. Well, I gave you the numbers. They're, they're there. The only ones that are missing are the 10th grade because not all of them were actually placed in my office. Alicia Mesa, please report to the middle high office. Alicia Mesa, report to the middle high office. Go ahead and do the writing process. And then type it into my access because I believe you're scoring them yourselves, right? The bats? The, the bad. writing? No. They're in my access. They're in my access? Okay, then I can go ahead and transfer those numbers as well. And it'll give, give us a better indication of where we stand in our progression in reference to our writing skills. Our students. What about those that were absent? I have like six or seven that I'm grading manually. I will put them in the report, but they're not in my access. Then on and any given day, like just send them to the library, and I'll sit with them to make sure that they put them in. You because it's in easier no to work with. Hmm? You might you want them in no matter what. Yeah, it's easier to work with the numbers once they're all recorded. And wow. it's fairly accurate too, the same way it that cat would grade them. You know, somebody that dropped out of junior college and applied for a job. We need to make a list of FCAT myths because that's the thing that I get to tire, most tired of. It really isn't an FCAT issue. It's, it's moving on, transitioning to college. 